Hello, my name is Donna Belk on the End of Life Journey. Following is a video I made several years ago about how to provide after-death care to a loved one. Below in the description are links to the different areas that are covered. And also there is a link to written instructions that follow along with this video. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. So who's the body volunteer today? Well, I think Leslie is hoping <laughs> she can do it. <laughs> Be the PR subject. It was pretty relaxing last time. That's right. For me. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Oh, did you offer to be our body? No, no. <laughs> I just asked who was going to do it. But for me, it was, I mean, I liked it. It's, just like it. <laughs> My friend Barbara, when she volunteered one time, she was at her workshop. She just felt so honored to be you know, here for it. That was nice. Did a great job. It was very beautiful. So here is the dress that we're going to put um, the person in once we finished with the uh, washing of the body. And these are scarves that, and some silk that we may place around her, or just to make it um, more beautiful. So just know that we can use these or not. So really everything that we're doing is so flexible it needs to be adjusted to the situation and what you're comfortable with doing. So for example if you knew that Aunt Rose never wore this color you wouldn't use the color. So. And then we have a bowl and we're going to put some water in here and that's what we're going to use for the washing. And we'll probably put a little bit of essential oil just to have a nice scent and to make it more pleasant and more beautiful. And here we have the, <clears throat> these are really just pillowcases. And when it's time to cool the body, we use dry ice and we'll put them in the pillowcases so that the ice doesn't um, get, uh, make things wet or um, stick to things. So that's the dry ice. And then we have a sheet that we're just gonna put on this nice sturdy table for um, just covering the table. And then we have some washcloths and some towels for wiping down the body. And we're gonna use the washcloths to wipe off the body and then the towels to dry the body. And I thought ahead a little bit. So for example, I thought ahead as to what we were gonna put Aunt Rose in. Let's just use that term. <laughs> And then I, I decided that this quilt and the pillow are going to be what we want her to lay on. So that was Aunt Rose's uh, favorite quilt and she used it until it's just tatters and she took it on camping trips with her and so it's totally appropriate that for laying her to rest that she would be surrounded and on this quilt and the little matching pillow. Now, you can get a lot more involved than what we've done here, but really, this is, um, will do the job. Some people are uncomfortable um, with touching a body or they have a cut on them or um, really could be any reason, even just if they're uncomfortable. Here are some latex gloves that you could wear if you don't want to touch the body. And so there's no, um, no way you can do anything wrong. Everything has to be adjusted to what you're comfortable with, what the situation is. Like you mentioned, if it was an elderly man and he was um, very uh, sort of rough looking, things you could do to make him look nicer. And, or if it's a, uh, a young person, it's gonna be, you're gonna do different things depending on what the situation is. So now's the time <clears throat> where we need a body. <laughs> So, does anyone would like to volunteer to you know be the body? Oh. <laughs> you know I don't mind. Oh, so. good, good. So we don't want you uh, lying on this 
our table while we're working on you. So we're gonna move everything, put a couple of blankets down, and then we'll have you hop up here. So anything else that anyone wants to add about what could be necessary? Like keeping the, the bed dry from the water washing the body? Yes. Um, there are some plastic um, protection um, called Chucks. Chucks is maybe a brand name. Mm -hmm. And that can be placed under um, the body to protect, for example, if you were doing this on a bed to protect the bed. Or you could use a shower curtain or drop cloth, so there are lots of things. Now, in my experience in doing home funerals, everyone has been in a hospital bed, which has worked great because all you do is put down the sides and then you have this, uh, uh, you're able to lift it up to a very nice workable height. And then sometimes people might be just in a regular bed and that would be a lot lower and it might be a little discomfort, um, you might have discomfort in the back by bending down and trying to wash and work on the body. So the old fashioned way was that you put the uh, person on a table and made them ready and then you had the vigil and, and then the burial. So that's why we have a, a table here. But if, if you have a hospital bed, that's really the most common and it's the most convenient. Yeah. Are we assuming that um, the person died at home? Yes. So we're in the same home. Yes. In this situation, we're in the same home where the person died. Right. And um, my other question is about just, are we emotions and the mm -hmm. things that come up for people? Mm -hmm. Um, maybe some people are arriving just for this part of it to help. Maybe some people lived here and they've been here, but the part, I mean, we're dealing on a real practical level here, but what, how in the process is the emotional part, um, and, and also just the length of the process? Yeah. Um, I, that's a great question, and the emotional part is, um, has to be considered and honored. and. I've been amazed as I've done these little workshops at how um, real it seems and how it can bring up emotion, even though we know Leslie's not dead, and but I think that there's um, this is a time and space to, to do that. So, uh, But then also we're not counseling or doing anything like that, but certainly I, I think that in a, when we're doing this, there's room enough for everything to be honored, for every way to be honored, every religion to be honored, every just, just what's needed in a real practical, loving, and respectful way. And I think we're assuming the simplest case, the most straightforward situation where the person dies at home, they probably, probably have had hospice care, there's an attending physician, it's, it's an expected death. So, um, it's, it's the simplest, most straightforward case. So you don't have to call 911 when the death occurs. The hospice nurse will be pronouncing the death. Hospice will, will notify the attending physician and then the <coughs> family, family and friends can just go ahead and lay out the body. If it is a, it changes if it is a young person, for example, a um, young man that died in a motorcycle accident. That is a very different situation, and as I said earlier, that's where you take into account what the situation is, and you have to make alterations for, for that. So. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> okay, so let's just move things off here, and then we'll get this ready uh, for our Aunt Rose, is who it's going to be. Can you hand the bowl to Lily and ask her mm -hmm. to go to the kitchen and half fill it with water? Warm, warm water. Oh. Quite warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Open it in case you bring my head over for the water. Okay. Good. Just in case you can't mm -hmm. get enough, it'll get all red. And if we had the chuck pads to make sure that water didn't leak through, this is the time that we would put those uh, in my car. pads down. Mm -hmm. Do you think we need those? Do you want to? We could even just use those as a black trash bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, shower curtain. Shower curtain. Mm -hmm. That's because not everyone would have a check bag. 
tip yeah. yeah. But a plastic mm -hmm. trash bag is a really good mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a blue sheet over there if you could. Let's put that on. Oh, it's underneath the scissors. Oh. Mm -hmm. Great. And would you be more comfortable if you had a pillow under your head? Okay. You're okay with pillow? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're going to assume that you don't have these clothes on, and we want to be respectful and modest um, so that everyone is comfortable. So this is a large towel, and this is um, from Guatemala, and when Aunt Rose went to Guatemala, she just loved it, mm -hmm. and so that's why we're covering her with this towel right now. And if I wanted to just say a few words sort of to create a sacred space, because whenever we do this work, we are stepping in this tradition that is thousands of years old. And through all sorts of cultures, the people have cared for their loved ones and um, in their homes and themselves. And so this is a very time-honored tradition. So I want to honor y'all for being here and participating and also to honor the thousands and thousands of people who've gone before and have, have done this work and to honor the thousands and thousands of people that are yet to come that will be doing this work and going through that process of death. Also, we may fumble things or misspeak or uh, make mistakes and that's totally fine. We can't do it wrong. Um, this person is dead and so if we uh, pinch the skin a little bit they're not going to feel it. Or if uh, we use water that's a little too hot that's not going to bother them. So um, just kind of keep a sense of humor about this and knowing that it's just like anything in life. It's uh, you know, fraught with beautiful things and then also can be fraught with things that are a bit icky or challenging for us. This poem is by Mary Oliver and it's called Praying. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and the silence in which another voice may speak. So I invite that other voice to be present with us and participate as we do this um, sacred work. So, do you have anything to add? Well, it's almost like entering the temple again as the group it comes together to care for their loved one who's died. So you're drawing on strength that's you know, very old. And also if people need a little extra help, you know, give you some rescue remedy or something like that to give them calmness to mm -hmm. face the task. Or you can <clears throat> step away and take a few breaths and just really take great care of yourself. Um, so at any time you're welcome to just pause might just take washing your hands and some nice mm -hmm. warm water or washing your face or something to kind of bring you back to that calm place. So if you'll bring the water over here, I have a little bit of <coughs> lavender that I'm going to put in it. Is that okay with you, Aunt Rose, if I put a little <laughs> lavender in the water? <coughs> And then one of the things that we like to do is to make things as beautiful as possible. So I'm going to take a few of the rose petals and uh, place them in the water too. So they can just kind of be adding even more beauty into the water. 
And roses are a real strong symbol of uh, love, all sorts of different types of love. And shall we light a candle or mm -hmm. think that would be nice? Yes. Okay. Excellent. So this candle is just going to be burning as we um, do this work in recognition of those who've gone before us, in recognition of all of us, and those that have yet to be born as we do in this process. The way that Sandy and I thought we would um, start is have two people that will be doing the actual washing and um, because it wouldn't work really that great to have all of us <laughs> washing at the same time, it might get confusing. So any volunteers for who would like to do that? Yeah, Ashley, Monica, great, great. And could you be our water holder for mm -hmm. a while? That would be very helpful. So I'm going to um, get the face rags, if um, you will just each take a face rag. Great. And Do we want to say something about closing the eyes and positioning the mouth at this point? Because that could be done before, before the washing. We could... Um, what do you, what do y'all think? My think my thought was that get them get them clean first or mm -hmm. wash first mm -hmm. because if there's goop on the eye mm -hmm. or something you might want to wash that off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do it a particular way? Susan? No. Okay. I mean, you try to close the mouth as soon as possible, but um, right. sometimes you just can't close the mouth completely. So, right. It just okay. depends. So yeah, if you'll open your mouth and there you go. And your eyes, yeah. <laughs> and so if y'all will go ahead and just dip the water in the, uh, or dip the washcloth in the water. And then one take position on one side and one on the other side. And you're fine where you are, Lily. You make a great water bearer, thank you. <laughs> Good to, it's nice that you went behind the ears because if there has been tearing from the eyes, that'll collect behind the ears a little bit. So a little later we'll work on our hair and you know lay it out so it's nice looking. Great. So this would be the point where if we wanted to keep her eyes closed and her mouth closed, there are several ways of doing it. Um, you can sometimes just, may I place my hand on your eyes? You can sometimes just close the eyes and keep your fingers there for a few minutes and that's enough to uh, keep the eyes closed. Or you can close the eyes and then place an eye pillow on top. But if you don't have an eye pillow, you can use a bag of rice or beans, just something that has a little bit of weight to it to keep the eyes closed. And then the mouth, you can hold the jaw just to keep the mouth closed and hold it for, I found that 10 minutes usually is plenty of time. Or you can have a cloth, or either a face cloth or a towel that you put underneath. And then for this, I would probably need to put the head on a pillow to mm -hmm. keep it shut. And then the time-honored way is um, mm. to use a tie. Mm. And we'll just, just to show this, just under the chin, and tie it to the top of the head. Yeah. Now, it doesn't have to stay like this 
for a long time. It's really and just until rigor mortis has set in and um, it'll stay by itself after that. So you don't have to leave the tie on the whole time. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, since you're the nurse, you have more knowledge about this, but rigor mortis comes and goes. So the, the best possible solution is to have the um, body with the eyes closed and the mouth closed as, and straightened as soon as possible after death because rigor mortis is going to stay, set in and then it'll be hard to move the body. But, but it tends to come and go. So first it's, uh, you know, the body's pretty stiff and then it loosens and relaxes and then it becomes stiff again and then loosening and relaxing. So that's the process. And on the arms and legs, if, if they are stiff and you want to move them, you can massage the area and that will make them um, easier to move. Okay. Is there any um, benefit to maybe either cold or hot temperature in accomplishing the positioning? That's a great question and to my knowledge, I think we tend to keep things more on the cool side just mm -hmm. because that slows the decomposition. Mm -hmm. But in terms of working with the body, that's a great question. And do you know the answer to that, Susan? No, but I know that it does get to a point, but really nothing's gonna mm -hmm. loosen the body enough to calm it down. Mm -hmm. And then there are also people who, the elderly, sometimes they're, they're you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, in such positions that you can't really do a lot with them anyway. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the goal is to make them look as comfortable as in the, wherever they're gonna be lying as mm -hmm. possible. Okay. Okay, so now we're ready for the uh, arms and uh, top, tops of the shoulders. Now since um, she has clothes on, we're not going to use water on mm -hmm. her shoulders, etc. But we'll go ahead and wash the lower part of the arms and then the hands. So if you'll just take them out from underneath the cover. and After we put the stamp cloth on you, would you like me to dry you oh, off I'm also? Fine. Okay. I'm fine. <laughs> you can also just take a bath towel and put it under the whole length of the arm, and that way you wouldn't be so nervous about splashing a little bit of water, mm -hmm. <coughs> of water and so on. So make it a little bit convenient. side now, Ashley. If this person had been attended by hospice and they, perhaps the hospice nurse had visited in the morning and the person died in the afternoon and a, a bath had been given in the morning by an aide or something, then you wouldn't have to go through a thorough washing. It might be it's more, more than for the, for the process of yeah. the family yeah. and the actual necessity. Yeah. It's more the ritual mm -hmm. aspect. And that maybe just send some oils or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in some yeah. cases, you wouldn't mm -hmm. need to really wash thoroughly because mm -hmm. they might have might have been sweaty and mm -hmm. so on in the process of dying that you'd want to mm -hmm. remove that. So then, to do the um, <coughs> top part, we'll want to do the chest, and then we're going to roll on the side and do the back. So. You know, here it really comes to, um, it's really up to the family about the modesty, etc. So we'll just, you want to just roll that back to the waist and then let me get another little towel. So it may be that uh, our family is sort of, uh, it's more modest and so we would want to cover Aunt Rose with a towel so that she um, 
would, um, I guess, just have more modesty. <laughs> and it's really, you know, mm -hmm. Aunt Rose doesn't care. She's dead. So. But it's really just for the comfort of the family. Mm -hmm. So if the washers will just sort of, um, you won't be actually doing the washing, but just sort of do this as the strokes will. Susan, do you have ways that you like to keep um, the modesty of the patient yes. when you're doing? It's the, you know, we need to each case, I guess, and also mm -hmm. yeah, just whatever you can, and whoever's in the room, if it's all daughters, you know, Baby. that plays a, you know, makes a difference for them. Poor you. Yeah. yeah. So now we're going to turn to, um, we're going to turn to do the back. So we'll need two people over here, one people with hands sort of on the hips, there you go. And then the other with the hands on the shoulder. If we can bend this knee up, I think mm -hmm. that helps a lot with the turning. Excellent, thank you. And then the two people. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> right, each other. Yeah. Like you had mentioned before, Donna, with the temperature of the water, and if you pinch mm -hmm. the person, it's yeah. not a big deal since they're dead. But and with that same thought in mind, it's really, this is the key to keeping the, the odors down that people worry about having your body really a kind of thorough cleaning, you know, especially in the private area is really important to, you know, make sure there's no feces or um, urine left on the body. So you don't, you know, you don't want to be too gentle, but I know with this situation you do, but, you know, in general, you don't worry about how much scrubbing you're doing, you know, and people will be worried about feeling that. Cause mm -hmm. And in the in the dying process, isn't there often a release of... Uh, Usually is, yeah. 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 So you really want to make sure that's clean. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clean that up. Mm -hmm. So we might change the cloth even at this point. Sure. Yeah. 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 But those, like those or it could be done right at the beginning, mm -hmm. right before there's any yeah. washing. Yeah. yeah. Actually, pl place her back on her back, and we'll show you what one person recommends. And usually if a person has been uh, ill for some time, it's very normal that the last few days they're not going to want to eat or have food. Mm -hmm. So the fluids of the body uh, aren't minimized. Mm -hmm. they're, yes, mm -hmm. thank you, they're minimized. So um, one person suggests that you just press on the belly to um, release all the fluids before you start um, mm -hmm. doing the washing. And so if you have a chux pad or some <clears throat> kind of some kind of an absorbent pad or even towel underneath the bottom and you pressed out the bladder, then you just take that away and then start the washing. So it's kind of getting that done, taken care of. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so then have a little cloth like this handy too. So if when you're turning the body over to the side, something might run out of the mouth, well, you can just have that handy to wipe it. Yeah. Simple. So mm -hmm. let's turn her on the other side. So, um, Susan, would you do the knee thing? Sure. Yeah. It just kind of helps with the pivoting of the body by bending that knee. So you can, the opposite of the side you're turning your own to. And then, yeah, just to pull the rest of the mm -hmm. Oh, we're going this other way? Um, the same way as we did. We brought her this way that time, Susan. Oh, so yeah, you want to wash her? sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you can bend up the other way again. So someone keep your hands there. Great. Great. Let's put her there. Now, this is where your expertise will come in very handy, Susan, because I, someone um, mentioned to me that a good way to, to clean um, between the legs was to lift the knee slightly and then another person would just have a rag and just would wash between the legs. So do you have a better way no. of doing that? No, I don't. No. So the way you're going to be able to clean it is good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. I wonder if you were doing, doing the entire leg and feet at the same time as that process or whether that's just another section, however it works the best. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Mm -hmm. If you had several people, mm -hmm. you can have several on one side and several on the other. Take turns. So okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's also washing the hair. If the hair really needs washing, you can use a mm -hmm. um, a dry shampoo that mm -hmm. they use 
many in many situations um, you don't need to have soap and water shampoo and that does a very good job or the person could be you know, the sheet lifted up and the person drawn to the other end mm -hmm. and somebody support the head and somebody underneath mm -hmm. hold the bowl of water and underneath mm -hmm. you can actually get a shampoo mm -hmm. and then have a hair dryer handy mm -hmm. so you can dry the hair <coughs> quickly various options for the hair if needed. So are we on the lakes? Can we talk on the lakes? <coughs> we haven't finished. Haven't finished, okay. It does seem uh, very helpful to think about the process as much as possible ahead of time so that you can figure out for yourself what you are comfortable doing and what you might want help with before you're in the moment trying to figure it out. Yes, I brought some handouts today so everybody here can have a list like that. This is a good time. There's a little blessing that it's really sweet to do as we honor this person. From here, we'll be uh, dressing her and uh, changing the sheet underneath. So this is like a transition point to um, to her official vigil. So um, this is a blessing from, I think it is the Pagan Book of Living and Dying, and I will need someone to touch her as I go through this. So um, let's say, Kunzong, let's say that you're the daughter of okay. Aunt Rose, okay. and you're going to um, touch these areas as I read them. Okay. And this is called The Blessing. I bless your hair that the wind has played with. I bless your brow, your thoughts. I bless your eyes that have looked on us with love. I bless your ears that have listened to our voices. I bless your nostrils, gateway of breath. I bless your lips that have spoken the truth. I bless your neck and throat we will remember your voice. I bless your shoulders that have borne burdens with strength. I bless your arms that have embraced us. I bless your hands that have shaped wonders. I bless your heart that loved us. I bless your ribs and lungs that sustain your life. I bless your belly, sacred storehouse of the body. I bless your thighs, strong foundation. I bless your legs that carried you. I bless your feet that walked your own path through life. Blessed be. Shall we do the dressing first? Or no, we need to get this um, sheet. wet sheet out from under. So Susan, could you take the lead on replacing the sheet with the quilt over there? Take off the top sheet. Is that what yes. you Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just put this in the place of the sheet. Mm -hmm. 
they want to show. Oh, the, this the, is the, what the, the size. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just roll it. Yeah, underneath there's about half of the quilt is on this side, and then the rest of the quilt is all under the over there. So instead of rolling it back and forth, we'll just kind of do this all at once. Unless this is really wet, then you might want to do it separately if you don't want mm -hmm. the quilt to get too wet. Um, okay, and then we can just roll it back. And then we have the dress to put on her. Is there anything that anyone wants to say or have any questions at this point? At the beginning, we might have to, um, to, to remove her clothes. You might, it might have been necessary to cut those clothes off, depending on <coughs> how stiff the body was or not. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they could just be easily removed. We'll be dealing with all different sizes of the bo of body, so it's really important to keep that in mind. You know, you might, if there's a larger body you're needing to clean, then you want to have people to help you. You can't do it by yourself without hurting your your back. So, <laughs> safety is still key here. I think to well, because it's so a body. so emotionally overwhelming too that you have really want to have at least two people, mm -hmm. preferably more. So, who would like to? is the dress and we're not going to try to slip this over her head we're going to cut the back of it to make it easier to uh, get on her and she's not going to be getting up and moving around so we can just tuck it in underneath her body is um is the intention that she will be also buried with this dress on mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. this is her final piece of clothing mm -hmm. and she used to be an extra large but she lost a lot of weight but she always loved this dress and she loves the chocolate brown color and so that's why we thought this would be the appropriate one to bury her in. So can you cut the dress? Sure. Just straight up the back. Only getting dressed would be, would be this easy. Yeah. <laughs> Before the person passed away. <laughs> so now there is the question of do you put undergarments on the person or not? And if she were very fastidious, for example, you might want to do that just to honor her. And in that case, you would just slip them from the bottom up. It can be managed but there's really no reason for it. So it's a personal decision based on what the family is comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So let's get her dressed and just um, move the towel down a little bit. So let's not uncover her entirely because we want to you know, have the modesty. And Kun Song, can you come and put her sleeve and put her dress, dress up away? <laughs> <laughs> You want to put her arm through? Oh. And uh, Aunt Rose, did you have stiff arms, please, a little bit? Just to make it a little more like that. And then will we roll her again to, to tuck it neatly under or just stuck? Stuck. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tuck it under. Mm -hmm. Yes, not stuck. It's suggested that you not use safety pins. Mm -hmm. They might 
come loose. Mm -hmm. Because the natural tendency would be perhaps to lift her up and just pin it, you know, behind mm -hmm. her neck or something. But this should be sufficient. And this is the time where we'll want to uh, make her hair lovely. Um, because we're getting ready to have the vigil. So we're going to make the room so that people can come and sit in uh, here with her for a few minutes or read or uh, write something. And so this will be the time for making her look lovely. So if you want to play with her hair and spread it out or place uh, some silk around her face or place her hands on her belly or over her heart. Now's the time. Now's the time to do that. Yeah. So. We're going to uh, and jump in here, uh, Susan and Sandy. So we're going to get her ready to look lovely, or to look more lovely, and then we're going to place the dry ice under her, which will cool the body. So um, I guess one <clears throat> one step for a woman, um, if if the Aunt Rose wore a lot of makeup, we might want to take some time and have somebody. Mm -hmm. Make her up too. Mm -hmm. People seem to wear less mm -hmm. of it, but some nail polish, nail polish, mm -hmm. toenail polish, whatever mm -hmm. expresses what mm -hmm. we rem remember about mm -hmm. her. Or even socks on her feet. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It seems appropriate. Mm -hmm. Or shoes in some cases. Somebody mm -hmm. might have been really boots. loved shoes or boots, boots or cowboy <laughs> boots. <laughs> or <laughs> bury me in my red boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm out there, bury me in my red boots, <laughs> please. <laughs> Actually, cremate me in my red boots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is uh, so y'all play with it and arrange things so that you think it looks nice to you. And I'll leave that up to y'all. You could use a flower. Mm -hmm. so you could take a flower hand, and place it in her hand on her belly or over her heart. You might have a sense that the hands want to go naturally in a different way, mm -hmm. like up here, or sometimes think the situation mm -hmm. will tell you mm -hmm. that she's holding something. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The young person who died in our community, they, they had him with his iPod in his hand and his, he his headphones on, you know, just mm -hmm. to, You're right. the options are endless. Mm -hmm. When my mother-in-law died, my daughter took her wedding ring off because she was afraid if we didn't take it off when we were dressing her and positioning her that we might in the end forget to you know, not remove it. And so she later took that ring and she took a rose petal and she put the rose petal on the table really close to her grandmother's head with a ring on it, which was really sweet, mm -hmm. just sitting there, letting her know that we weren't taking it far away. Cut it any length so that you can see. Take it. Mm. Make it make things softer. Oh, here would be a time when you could put the flowers. Or you can take a few of the rose petals and put, put them around her head. So the um, next step is to put dry ice um, under the body in order to keep the body cool so that it can stay in the state of honoring or vigil for a day or two days or three days. 
different states have different laws about it. So dry ice comes in different sizes and shapes and it evaporates. So you have to make sure that the room has some ventilation. In this room with the open door, for example, and the, the air conditioner on is fine. You don't have to worry about it. So what we'll do is that when we handle the dry ice, we use gloves, leather gloves, so that our hands don't stick to the dry ice, and then put it into uh, pillowcases and place it under the body. So we'll, we're not going to actually use dry ice because it would burn <laughs> Aunt Rose. So do y'all want to get a couple um, of pillowcases? Yes. Would you tell me what is the law here? The law is that the body has to be cooled within 24 hours. And then how long? I believe do, it, do you have to? I believe you have up to 10 days. Mm -hmm. In Texas, no, law. In there Texas. Was no upper limit <coughs> stated by the law. It's just after 24 hours that elapsed, you have to refrigerate or embalm the body. Mm -hmm. And of course, dry ice <coughs> is adequate for refrigeration. It is. Mm -hmm. And where do you get dry ice? I went to uh, just a grocery store mm -hmm. and got dry ice, and it was a dollar a pound. And usually you'll want to start with uh, several pounds of it in order to cool the body. So for example, Aunt Rose is a slight person, so we may only use 20 pounds at first. And then as we change it each day, because it's going to evaporate, we'll replace it. But when you replace it, you don't need as much as you do right at first. If Aunt Rose were 300 pounds, then it's going to take a little more dry ice to uh, cool the body. Do you take an ice chest to get the ice, dry ice in? You can take an ice chest or you can have them put it in paper bags for mm -hmm. you to get it home. But to store the dry ice, you want to use a styrofoam container versus a plastic ice chest because if it's so cold, it will make the plastic brittle, which could break. Mm -hmm. And then you put it directly under the body or under the blanket? You put it directly under the body. So, for example, um, why don't you hand me a pillowcase? Mm -hmm. So I've got my leather glove on and my chunk of dry ice and I place it in the pillowcase. And then I just sort of roll up the pillowcase so that it's small. You want your chunks um, not a huge chunk, but a small chunk. So um, actually, I can just roll her to the side a little bit and place it maybe just right under there. That's fine. And then I can use this to sort of cover anything mm -hmm. that we show. Mm -hmm. So the placement is one under each shoulder and then under the hip or small of the back area. Some people will even place a little bit under the head and I've even heard uh, one person suggest placing it on the on top of the belly. Mm -hmm. So you would want to cover it so it looked nice and then place the hands back on top in this situation, for example. The idea is to cool the torso, the extremities we don't really need to worry about. So anything more you, you would add to that about the placement of the dry mm -hmm. ice? I don't think so. I think once the, the body is cooled down in the, in the first, say, 12 hours or so, then you might not need any ice on the belly anymore. And once the body is cooled with the dry ice, it's very cold. Dry ice is exceedingly cold. So, as Donna said, you would replace it <coughs> when, when, it, uh, when it evaporates, but you need less each time to keep it in that state. And you could just, if you didn't have enough pillowcases, you could just slip some of it into the brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. oh, that would be fine. And you want the skin to be um, so that you can press on it and have some give. You don't want the skin to feel like a frozen chicken, for example, where it's just totally hard. So if it's, you press on it and it's like a frozen chicken, that means it's too much dry ice and back off on the dry ice mm -hmm. for a while. Well, with your experience, you have a lot more knowledge about how much mm -hmm. to get and how much to use. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I always just get 30 pounds and <laughs> see how far it goes. And mm -hmm. if it's evaporated after 12 hours, 
instead of 24 hours, you just replace it. Mm -hmm. So it's really not an exact mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's on the temperature of the room as well. well. That's well, right. The weather. Yeah. What the weather is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lives in Florida, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. This is redundant, but you mentioned the leather gloves, and it's because, again, for the safety of the people working with the body, it will actually burn you. Mm -hmm. It's It freezes on mm -hmm. contact, so that's why you're wearing the, the leather mm -hmm. gloves and putting it in. You, you don't want to get freezer burns mm -hmm. on your skin. And if you don't have leather gloves, I think you can use like a folded towel, like a washcloth. Sure. Yeah. Or yeah. Hot, yeah. hot, yeah. hot so. pad. A mm -hmm. knit. A knit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a lot. Yeah, the other thing is, too, if you have some left over in your styrofoam cooler that you're not using right away, <coughs> to keep it from con from evaporating quickly, you stuff all the empty space with rumpled up newspaper. Mm. So it doesn't... It insulates it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it makes it last longer. Um, here might be a place if the person has had to have an autopsy mm -hmm. and you've somehow been able to request, which is possible in Texas, for them to be brought back to the house. And if there's... If it was around the head, this is where you would want a gossamer scarf mm -hmm. over them. Mm -hmm. And if the person, in case, well, anyone, sometimes when the disease they have makes their abdom abdomen swell, mm -hmm. ovarian cancer, for one, mm -hmm. or cancer of any of that mm -hmm. area, and I've seen where people will just make a pasteboard box, get a large box, mm -hmm. and just start it right here, and then. And so that way, when people come in, they still see Aunt Rose or Uncle Ted, and they're not, mm -hmm. as they remember him best, and they're not, there's not this uh, reminder of mm -hmm. what he died of, mm -hmm. and, and for children particularly, that can scare them. Mm -hmm. They don't remember Grandpa like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So shall we do coon songs? I just... Uh, last week heard this chant, it's a Hindu chant, and um, the words are Lakala Saristaha Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings embrace the peace, love, and compassion that has always been ours, from the beginningless, in the middle, this life, and for the hereafter. Lokawa Samastaha Suki no Parandu Lokaha Samastaha Suki no Parandu Lokaha Samastaha Suki no parandu Shanti 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 Hare Om Psalms 139. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there thy hand shall lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. So we would allow Aunt Rose to lay in an honoring state and invite friends over and family. And then at the end of that time, whether it was five hours or two days, we would carry Aunt Rose to her coffin and take her to be buried or cremated.
I think there are a few logistical things we need to do in order to carry her to her coffin. So do we want to take a little break now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get the coffin ready and... Uh, Here's a question though, if we take a break, she's going to break, what does Leslie do? I just made him say it. Just okay. Just <laughs> well, say it. <laughs> okay, then let's... Um, it's a welcome let's, break. <laughs> let's yeah, figure right. out what we're routine. routine. <laughs> so we have the coffin and the coffin's painted, so we just need to figure out logistically. And it's actually very appropriate because the lo so much of this is just logistics. It's not that the work is so hard. So we have the coffin and it's on the front porch, but it's pretty high up. It's on sawhorses, so it's unrealistic of us to think that we could lift her up there. So maybe we should put the coffin on the floor of the porch and carry her out and put her in that. Does that sound? And we're not bringing the coffin in here because it's easier to get her out through the house than it is her in mm -hmm. the coffin. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. <laughs> The doorway is narrow. And yeah, it's yeah. Hard to like moving a sofa or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. So when we do um, come to carrying her, what we'll do is sort of bunch up the quilt because that's mm -hmm. going to go with her, and then we will stagger ourselves, one on each side, to in order to make it through the door. And usually, when you're carrying someone, you want to keep their head a little bit elevated, so that if there are any fluids, it won't. Um, run out. And you can even have a person walking along with a little rag in case there's any fluids from their mouth, etc. So, so, could you stand here, Susan? Mm -hmm. Great. So, the way that we're going to move her, and you want to participate with me, you want to come over here, Lily? Sure. And you can be here. So, we'll have three people on one side and three people on the other side. Okay. So, you're going to just uh, grab this and, right, and just sort of ball it up, getting it as close to the body as you can. And then what we're going to do is carry her out through the um, door and place her in the casket, uh, casket with her feet facing the uh, outside door. Mm -hmm. Now, two people won't fit through that door at the same time, so you need to make sure you're staggered. So, um, you know, mm. yeah, th there you go. I think that'll work. And um, hopefully, Aunt Rose, we won't tip you out. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, so shall we go on count of three? One, two, three. Bodies are heavy. Excellent, excellent. One person through the door at a time. Still have that head a little bit up? No, the head needs to be up more. Could 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you so much for viewing this video. It was a real labor of love. Wishing you well.